I was quick today. I got it done quick. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Wednesday Night Live show. Our guest is Dr. Glover. She is the New Zealand Public Health Academic specializing in smoke sensation. She has worked at the University of Auckland and been a full professor at Messi University. Uh, she set up the Center of Research Excellence, the C-O-R-E-I-S-S, -S, Indigenous Sovereignty and Smoking back in 2018. Uh, and of course, uh, my wonderful team here, missing one guy. We're missing one. He'll be here. Paul will be here. He will be here. Uh, before we jump into our interview with uh, Dr. Glover, uh, let's say hello to this team, this wonderful team. Tim, how's your week going? <laughs> I don't know where to start, John. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where to start, John. Should well, should I save the best for last at the end of it all? John you sent me started. a little. John yeah. sent me a little gift, and I was supposed to wait and not 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 share it until the show. So should I share that now, John, or should yeah, I talk share about that. my? Tim, All if right, you have so, pool skimmer like you know anecdotes, we can skip. No, those. no, it's just we're gonna call it sweet revenge, Philip. We're gonna yeah. call it. We're gonna call it taking measures to, to. Um, Good lord! Ensure, I seem to finish my drink. Go taking ahead. measures to ensure that the signage down at the pool is no longer compromised by a five-year-old with a squirt gun. John has has. Uh, knighted me with a tool in order to fight back against this my what what's the word is he my nemesis is he's that nemesis. what is, he's my yeah. nemesis he's okay, your nemesis so. yeah all right so he's, he, before before i apologize get, this is important it is important yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i don't want anyone to get the wrong idea there no one will be harmed <laughs> in the confrontation that may take place but i'll have you know I am ready to go. Oh man! It's a fully automatic squirt gun, folks. Yeah. And you can, you you fill her up up here. It's battery operated. Hold on, let's see if you can hear it. Can, can you hear that? And and then you can even put a water bottle on the top of yep. it and have like the extra like water mag. So yep. at any rate, uh, Junior's going down. <laughs> can you pop, can you mount like a phone cam on that thing so we can have footage? <laughs> I, I, I think GoPro. I could put a GoPro, a GoPro on it. Yeah. I could put a GoPro on it. This is state you, of the art sort give, of child rearing that, that, right here. That, I think yeah, that Call of Duty, uh, you know. And he can do down. it from 35 feet away. See, having been pummeled by the now 20 and 19 and 21 year old. If I, I wish I had what you have now back then. <laughs> that said, Tim, yeah. God, go out so, there. And, and what's and... nice, too, is you can take the bump stock off of it and you can just go with the pistol grip. You know, it depends on, on, on how, 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 how you want this to go down. But anyway, I did test it out on the dogs. And, uh, yeah, and, um, sure and, and Har Har Harley tried to drink the whole thing. So yeah. at any rate. Uh, nice. Nah, see, I, I just, you know, we're me and Tim, Tim and I, or whatever you want to say, however you want to say it, we're at that age where we don't want people on our lawns. We don't want people <laughs> messing up our signs. You know, yeah. Yep. Like, so Dr. Glover didn't get the first part of that story, which happened last week. I was challenged by a five year old. So I, I'm the member of my HOA board here in the community that I live in. And so one of my pets has been the pool and so i've been putting all kinds of like creative signs up you know instructing people to do this or do that and there's been this little five-year-old who goes down to the pool with his parents and and when they're not looking he takes out his frustrations with his squirt gun on all my signs that are then <laughs> bleeding bleeding and running all over the place so at any rate this was john john felt that he needed which we to, all know is very bad behavior yeah. thank you john yes. Yeah, John felt that he needed to arm me appropriately. I anyway, did. I will finish off my week. My week's actually been pretty good. I am now officially uh, submitted and licensed in the state of Georgia 
as my own LLC now. Yeah, so, baby. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this power. But, uh, <laughs> you now but have the tools. Yeah, I'm going to turn it into something positive. But anyway, so yeah, that's been my week. Other than that, it's just been work. So. Nice. Allie, can you top that story? I, I hate that you were after him because it's just Tim's just got these. Unfortunately, I cannot top that. It, it's, it's really hard to go after Tim. I say, um, you know, I've just been working, you know, like my normal job and, um, <laughs> you know, getting ready for uh, Miami, which I'm going in two weeks for the um, Next Generation Nicotine Conference. Um, so just kind of practicing my speech, getting my slides in order, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, just doing the, you know, mom thing. Band yeah. is watching band starting up so I, my son got a car um this week oh, yeah so i haven't slept this week so <laughs> oh yeah <I'm> really... <laughs> oh my gosh i know this lack of sleep this insomnia i know this very well how are you coping i just i'm constantly checking Alcohol. his location that's, that's <laughs> all it is i'm just constantly refreshing his location make sure that he's unless he's secretly me. hiding like all kinds of uh mischief he seems like yeah, a really that good kid, kid is a good kid he's man. a really good that's kid and he yeah. also that's... looks like a really terrible liar so you've got oh, that yeah. go yeah, he's, he's selling trumpets on the side kind. somewhere i don't know where he came from i, I was not like that at 16. i got very michael hard. tried to run <laughs> jello shots past me once from the front door of the fridge i said what the hell do you think you're doing? just jello just jello dad he stopped right there and he said i'm so sorry <laughs> dr glover how's your week going <laughs> Oh, um, talking about polls, <laughs> <laughs> we um, had the council, a local council government um, pool inspector come out. We live um, not in an urban area. We're just sort of on the edge of the city and we have a small, um, what, what we call in New Zealand, a lifestyle block, what my sister calls a life struggle block. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, you know, there's a pool, but it's too cold, actually, in Auckland uh, for me. So the, it's a duck pond. But <laughs> it has to be fenced by law. Uh, there's all these rules. And, you know, so we put a spa into the deck instead because that's warmer. Uh, and it's kind of cut into the deck, you know, so it sits down a bit. Anyway, I just feel like. With everything that's happening in New Zealand, and you might have seen my tweets and my mm. concern about the the black market yeah, that's that happened worse. here with cigarettes and their their ram raiding vape shops, and and then I warned in two of my papers that that this can spiral, it can it can spiral out of control, and it can spread, yeah. and now it's just completely like they're ram raiding jewelry stores, they're clothing stores they're smashing into whiteware stores because they want a fridge and and i was just like this guy came out i was like oh it's like a little hitler you know it's like <laughs> stomping around the deck and you can't have that and you can't have that and this is wrong and fix that <laughs> and take that off there and i'm like whoa yeah. like we have a no one can get onto the property unless we buzz them in. You know, it's just yeah, a little. It's an thing easement. Steve so, rigged yeah. up. There's the the pool and the spa are behind the house in a fenced off area. The pool is fenced as well. There's no kids. Yeah. My daughter's eighteen. There's no kids. There's no way a child is going to come there um, unless friends came over who had children, and then you know they wouldn't. Oh, and it's do you like need some, me to sing you? A I really gun. don't think they would. Be, you know. <laughs> I want one of those guns. Um, How are she kids guns, being interested in misbehaving pistol. around you? Yeah, yeah. yeah here, like, here, here, here it's the same. She doesn't need the pistol. I don't yeah. think. Yeah, it's, some groups are just doing whatever they want. They're not police. They don't care about the law. And other people are being legislated. You know, mm -hmm. like every tiny wee little detail of their life, and it just does your head in. <laughs> so yeah. the micromanagement issues yeah. in New Zealand have not gotten better; they've gotten worse. Yeah. Oh, it's, just it's, going to regulate everything, you know. And is this guy just some random guy from your HOA who appointed himself, um, you know, street uh, nanny? I don't know. It, it sounds no, this absurd. Is, this is government, local government, the local government council. And they, they have a bin department, they have the pool department, you know, they have these inspectors. Yep. 
Yeah, it's, it's everybody's so got a hat. It's problem. one of those things that probably started out as for the greater good, and then you defied him, and then he can't lose. So, and that's a cycle, unfortunately. Is this where you have your lambs and your your? Um, yeah. Okay, there. It's beautiful. Uh, well, hopefully your week gets better. It'll get better. Philip, it's too much work though. It's yeah, all yeah. you know. You know, with everything, there's just too much to do. Yeah. 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 Just you tell do him to. We'll Good send you Tim. Tim's corner. great. Tim's great. We'll send you Tim and a water gun. You'll be yeah. fine. There you go. I got, you're going to feel much back. better by the time we're done back. here today. Uh, and I'm sure Tim's already been there once. No, he hasn't. He hasn't been there. Where? Uh, Philip, New, uh, Poland. I've yeah. been to Auckland several times, my yeah. friend. I, I, I go. was going to tell, right. the, tell the doctor that Mirawai Beach was amazing. I, yeah. I went to Mirawai Beach and went up on the cliffs. And I forget the name of the birds that roost up there, but like we went by the nesting bird area but like it was so picturesque like if you stand on the cliff and you overlook all of mirawai beach it, it's almost like a postcard come to life you, you just can't even yeah. fathom you have to see it in person we'll send him it, it is, Philip, it is how's your week going buddy i think it's safe to say that i can finally relax hey um i'll say this very quickly we sold our house greg can tell you about that place because we now have two children, stepchildren of mine, her children. One is graduated, heading to med school in the fall. The other one is very difficult and <laughs> summer in between freshman and sophomore year. We're very proud of her, but she needs to stop talking now. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> uh, we, and the, it doesn't really matter how much, uh, how well you do on your house sale. The next um, step is buying a new house and Frankly, there are a lot of different uh, ways that um, people like to generalize what this housing market is in the United States. And well, uh, I've had a real estate license since, well, I was old enough to have one just because it seemed like the easiest thing I could have that would you know, benefit me at some point. Um, don't listen to anybody <laughs> about anything, about what surplus demand, sellers are doing this, buyers doing that. The only thing you can be sure of what the current mortgage rates are and everything else is more or less decided before you have a chance to look around and wonder, you know, what's on the table. All that being said, we found a really, really wonderful place about a block away from where we were. And um, I couldn't be nice. happier for everyone. And I can... You notice he said everyone. You didn't. You didn't mention yourself. I'm always content, John. <laughs> it's very weird, but that's true. Yeah, I'm, that's it. I'm very content to be. That's what makes you special, Philip. That's what I did. Makes you what special. I didn't want to do is open my mouth as a real estate professional and screw something up because <laughs> even no matter yeah. what I said, if it was helpful, yeah. if I said it in a certain way to Deirdre, she would throw a fit, and all I've done is you know. Uh, inflame a situation that wasn't a situation to begin with. So I'm really glad that I did yeah. keep quiet. See? Good home. You know, you're, you got new home. Mr. Paul, you were late. You're punished. Uh, give yourself... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> How's your week going, Paul? <laughs> well, you. So, no, so far so good. Just trying to go over a few things and just dealing with bureaucracy here in australia yes you some, are and some very very silly laws mm. let's just put it that way that's where i'm going to stop but no all in all it's winter here and there's not a cloud in the sky and hopefully i'll be going fishing over the next few days so there you go. that's what i'm going to be doing Perfect. I've noticed there's a lot about maybe there needs to be more about what's going on in New Zealand, but Australia is not quite as remote as they had hoped they were because they're getting a lot of attention and not the right kind on social media. So there's that. Uh, before we get into uh, questions for you, Dr. Glover, we have uh, six fun questions to get to know you a little better. So I'm going to hit you with two and then <laughs> give you two here and there. I'm sure you're prepared for these. I I'm sure you've watched the show. <laughs> I'm going to hit you with the first one. And this is really important, this one. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> oh, like all the pi- all the pineapple people are like, yeah, hey, she's in our corner. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. Okay, stop, everyone, stop, stop. I need to get my reorient myself. That was pineapple. No, right. Okay, okay, good, good choice. I heard no, Philip too. I heard no too. <laughs> I definitely didn't hear like pineapple and ham slash Canadian bacon slash pork rock. No. Yeah, actually, pineapple isn't the worst thing that could happen to a pizza. You could, you could, hell, you could throw something along the lines of, I don't know, but currants or strawberries or something <laughs> absurd on your pizza. I mean, there are all kinds of fruits that would make the world a worse place. Uh, and the second question, and it's, these questions are kind of to kind of get to know you a little bit better, a little bit different. Uh, your first job, and did you get fired or did you quit? Remember that first job. Paid or unpaid? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, it depends how you define a job. I was put to work in uh, my mum and her husband's hotel um, in the in the uh, dining room. So I guess waitressing. Yeah, that's. And, And I do remember being woken up in the middle of the night like two or three in the morning to go down and mop the public bar. So things like that. Yeah. That would, yeah. You I, didn't I, get I, fired though. Mom didn't fire you. No. <laughs> no like, I would have quit if I could have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Uh, yeah. So we are going to start with questions and I am going to uh, start with the, uh, with, uh, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to randomize this. Uh, Philip, go ahead. I'm going to let you go first today. <laughs> okay <laughs> specifically um uh one of the last interviews i saw you give was with chris snowden i was going to go back and revisit that it was a very very good interview and it was eye-opening about a lot of the things for example uh convenience stores i believe they're called dairies in new zealand correct and you talked about i, I imagine you hate being right all the time about these things you talked about the theft and and the absurd amount of auto theft that takes place when one of these capers is pulled off you have the original car and then you have the getaway car and then you have the third car that they drop somewhere down the line so by the time you're finished with this they are you know going to jail forever all for uh, um black market smokes and i mean for things like that and now obviously it sounds like things have gotten expanded in terms of its uh depravity um, but there was something you talked about. Um, we have a lot in common with New Zealand, with the exception of the United States makes a lot of hollow threats when it comes to we're going to ban this, we're going to ban that, and it never actually comes to fruition. What A point that I never thought of is how New Zealand and Australia, to a lesser extent, they are very isolated, and the governments there have a tendency to think that gives them a certain amount of carte blanche to do certain things and try out certain things that haven't been tried. For example, the low nicotine standard in cigarettes, something that I'm very much opposed to. Um, I, I'm not sure how you still feel about that, but it seems like there's been actually more research to come out since you gave that interview to show that people are willing to commit um, petty larceny to obtain real full nicotine cigarettes. Um, Is that something that is likely to happen in the near future? And have they given up the um, age um, for every year that uh, passes? They raise the uh, age that you can buy cigarettes by one year until you have to be 99 to buy cigarettes and 98 year olds can't, that sort of thing. So that was a several part question. So with the low nicotine standard, let's start there. And then I'd, I'd love to know what's going on with the the crime rate um, having to do with the black market. Thank you. Well, um, first off, they passed the law. It's already gone in. It's done. So, uh, oh, it's, a, you know, three parts. Um, I think next year, so we've got this goal of smoke-free 2025, which is defined as 5% or below smoking prevalence. And uh, so next year, August, so the three parts are uh, in April 2025, which is not the first one, but it's the one that comes to mind, 
um, the I call it denix. They're going to denicotinize the cigarettes. Smoked tobacco will be denicotinized down to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 milligrams per gram of tobacco. But the yield, so that that's might be what's actually in there, but when mm. someone smokes, the yield they're going to get will be 0 0.08 um, milligrams per gram of tobacco. So we're talking a trace level. So uh, instead no, of it being um, 20 low nick cigarettes for every one uh, regular strength cigarette, it's tw double that, essentially? Uh, oh, no, I think it will still be around about 20 cigarettes. Okay. The amount of nicotine in 20 cigarettes, it's going to be you know that's so, what will be in one cigarette so they're we'll basically honest. completely gutting it um like having your car you go out to go to work there's no engine you can sit in there and play with the wheel right yeah but nothing's <laughs> gonna happen so um but nobody here understands what it would be like to smoke one of these things um nobody understands we've never had them here on the market I believe you have had them on the market in the US, but the only people who have ever tried one here would be people who have participated in a research project. Um, and I've been on one of those research projects. There's been a couple of them. They're the only ones that would have any idea. And basically after being on those projects, if you ask those people what they think about it, they'll say, well, I wouldn't pay for it. Or, you yeah. know, no, I, I don't think, you know, the concept of mandatory removing nicotine from tobacco cigarettes across the country on 1 April 2025. Um, not we, we don't have very many people who will still be smoking you, their You've just device. made criminals rich. Uh, I can't yeah. even begin to understand that reasoning. It's just yeah. horrifying. But that is actually happening, whereas yep. before it was just a hypothetical. Yes. The uh, law passed. Yep, the age ban passed, so that's already um, that's that's gone through. And the other part to it was reducing the number of dairies and any any stores that sell cigarettes. So, from about six thousand, seven thousand throughout the whole country now, a country the size geographically the same size as Japan, roughly, uh, but we only have five million people, and. Um, reducing from 6,000 shops to 600 shops wow. spread across the country. So this sounds a lot like it's part of a larger plan to eventually eradicate, um, well, even uh, safer alternative cigarettes. If, if indeed is the uh, age of uh, cigarette purchase, is that, you know, one year uh, increase, is that policy ever going to see the light of day or is that... Um, no, no. That, that is... They passed yeah. it. I can't they believe passed. they actually that that passed along with the low nicotine standard. Yeah. So the they are things. actually going for this entire elimination of tobacco, and God knows the elimination of safer alternatives to combustible tobacco are next because I believe they are regulated by the same body in New Zealand. I'm not certain, but yep, that's the ministry, shocking. Ministry of Health, <laughs> Ministry of Health joke, um, you know because. The black market is already like completely out of control um, and vaping products are as as attractive and valuable now on that black market. So, you know, our cigarettes have been locked away in a cupboard behind the counter with no, you know, grey cupboard, same as in Australia, right? And uh, that's been for some time. It's hard for them to get in there. They've got to smash it and bash it. Mm -hmm. And now uh, many stores have vape products on the shelf and not behind any locked cupboard. Mm -hmm. So when they do these ram raids and smash into the dairies or go in during the day, bash the people up and take what they want, they're taking vaping products as well now. So they're right. very valuable on the black market. Well, of course, they've just well. decreased the number of places where you can legally buy a vape. So next thing... I can't. Yeah. Eight, eight months ago, when you gave an interview that I watched. Hold on, made, Paul. Hold on, it Philip. It might have been. Hold on, Philip. Philip, hold on. Go ahead, Paul. Your question. One at a time. <laughs> no, my my question is, 
do you do you think now that New Zealand is going to follow the same pathway as Australia? No, I don't. I don't think we will do that. I mean, we do definitely have our prohibitionists who who were so you know over the moon about what Australia did, and then straight away hit the media saying we should be doing the same as Australia and. Uh, but, you know, we're very different countries in the sense of, yes, we're both isolated down at the bottom of the Pacific, uh, but Australia is a massive, huge country geographically, really large, very large border and uh, very close to Asia, whereas we're three hours away by plane from Australia or Fiji. Um, so, you know, Australia, it, it's almost an impossible job to stop Cross border, you know, from Asia, um, you know, black market product coming in and then going throughout the country. Whereas in New Zealand, and New Zealanders do sort of have this mentality, we're kind of God's own, you know, like if there was a nuclear war, we'd be all right because who would bother bombing down here? And, yeah. You know, and all, all of your fallout won't get to us until like next century or something. <laughs> So New Zealanders <laughs> do have this attitude about, like, no, we're special, um, you know. Uh, and How's the housing market there? <laughs> um, nice. We're very affected by the international economy, you know, and it doesn't, it hurts. <laughs> if something happens in America, it really hurts here too. So, no, I don't think New Zealand will go the same. We have the evidence to show that vaping has been just so successful in terms of rapidly dropping smoking prevalence. Yeah. But the laws that they have put in, the, what you were saying before, Philip, yes, we've got these three prohibitionist laws aimed at reducing, eliminating smoking, and the vaping regulation that passed previously basically embedded that we'll get rid of smoking and then we'll get rid of vaping. So the same thing will roll on to vaping once few enough people smoke. So the end game in New Zealand, would you call it a, a soft, long uh, game prohibition uh, as opposed to Australia is just ban it all? Because I, I, it sounded like eight months ago when you were talking about these things, they were still very much uh, a what if sort of scenario. And, and in the last eight months, they are, it's happened. It's astonishing. Yeah, it's. I wouldn't say it's soft, and I wouldn't say it's slow. Uh, the renicotinization policy, that is like throw everyone into cold turkey on one day. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, and I think you already do Party. have, I guess, the most expensive cigarettes in the world in New Zealand. Uh, relative uh, to income. Relative to income, yes. Yeah, the, the, the tax is the highest. And that's, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what led to the black market. Go ahead, Ali. Thank you. So you've been doing this for over 30 years. You've yeah. published over 100 papers. Um, you know, I mean, obviously an inspiration to all of us, and we're very glad to have you on the show. Thank um, you. You know, what made you so passionate about tobacco harm reduction, and, and what keeps you going? Uh, I guess, you know, 25 years or even... <laughs> Because vaping's been around now, like you know, a lot of people forget vaping's been around for twenty years, yep. twenty years, yeah. and that you know the people in tobacco control are still saying, "Oh, it's only been ten years." You know, we don't know what's going to happen. I'm thinking, no, no, I know people who've been vaping for like must be eighteen years now. Yeah. Um, so it was let's say twenty years in tobacco control, incredibly, incredibly frustrating. So little progress. Uh, nothing seemed to work and and then the tax going up and up and up um, people in tobacco control getting more and more and more frustrated more and more and more angry with these dumb bad yeah. consumers um, and, and 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 I was in there and I was part of that and coming up with nastier and nastier ideas to stigmatize them to trigger them to quit you know um 
so so condescending even all the smoking cessation programs and the attitudes to people who would smoke so condescending oh they've got low self-esteem you know they're low confidence and and, the, and watching people working with young maori women <laughs> pregnant women and, and then i saw this woman role playing this is how to do it and uh, oh, i nearly vomited you know like the inside i was like don't you talk to her like that it was like it was so condescending and uh, but i don't know i thought obviously we just kept looking we just kept looking for something that would work you know we tried to get snus legalized here yeah. must have spent 10 years lobbying for swedish snus and no they wouldn't wouldn't allow it and then um my best friend she went to a conference in asia and came back and said hey there's this electronic cigarette and the group we got into looking at that and murray Logerson, who was uh, my mentor got me into this work he did the first study on the ruyan e-cigarette uh and began yeah that's the first study to look at what's in it and that's and we just lobbied and lobbied and lobbied from there on. Um, and I guess harm reduction, though, I have learned a lot. You know, I've come across from the prohibitionists. I don't like to use the word cult. <laughs> <laughs> cult cults are very serious and dangerous and evil things. Uh, but, you know, it has been a transition um, and, and to come out of the echo chamber um to be punished it within the echo chamber for starting to question things and say no i don't agree and then to come out of that echo chamber and get some distance from that and start looking back and going and just how nasty how nasty and vicious and violent these people have been towards me are uh, being towards consumers are mm -hmm. uh, being towards anybody who disagrees with them, like Simon Chapman and that creepy Turk guy. And there's so many of <laughs> them. I mean, that? Creepy. Not, there's way more of you. And yeah. that they, you know, they really are. You know, I feel like I have to have a shower yeah. after <laughs> he attacks me. It's, the the mute go, function is really, really, um, yeah. yeah, it can do yeah. a lot for your soul. There's, Alice, do you mind if I ask one question? There's oh, something sorry. really wrong, you know. You go, there's something really wrong. Wait, wait your I, turn, Philip. <laughs> wait I, your I, turn, Philip. <laughs> I look back and I, I'm like, oh, it was. There were like cult, like brainwashing, like group, you know, mm -hmm. uh, conformity type strategies being used, and I'm. I feel bad about that. I feel like. I got yeah. sucked in um, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I did some, I, I participated in some of that bad stuff that has hurt consumers and I'm, so I'm going to try and make it right. I'm going to try and balance that out. Yeah. How many years ago was that that you decided to change your mind about the way that you were doing things in tobacco control? About 2011, I uh, began to to question the tax rises because it was just every year every year it would go up and would go up it would go up it would go up and and because most of my research is with uh, low income and and maori indigenous people and and i was hearing from them how this financial strain was affecting their families uh, i also do research and I've done some research around obesity and was doing some work, a project with Māori and Pacific families about food, feeding your children. And I was hearing it through there. And, uh, you know, and I, I just got to the point, I was like, no, I don't support this anymore. And that's when things, you know, started to, ooh, we might have to get rid of her. Yeah. <laughs> Tim. <clears throat> Uh, I thought I was muted. I was getting ready to find the mute button. So give, given that, that they have this smoke-free kind of goal by 2025 and the reduction of nicotine and, and consumption and stuff like that, why do you feel like the government thinks that's the only true natural pathway 
to cutting down the smoking rates without offering a transitional pathway to maybe wean people down in, in other formats. Cause even with, even with the lower nicotine cigarettes, okay, fine. I mean, if nicotine is the devil here and that is the addictive component that they seem to think draws people back to buying them in general, you're still going to get the 4,000 to 7,000 chemicals that are contained in the cigarettes. So why, so even if they allow that to continue on for a period of time with the, with, with the reduction in nicotine, do they, why do you feel they're so steadfast on that path to uh, eradicating smoking as opposed to finding a transitionary way to do it with other products that are less, har less harmful? Well, we have, we do have vaping. So vaping is the only one that, that oh no, not the only one. We also have uh, the heat not burn products, <laughs> although I think there's only one brand. And, uh, but because advertising of tobacco products has been banned for a long time. Very few people in New Zealand know about the heat not burn product, plus the entry price is a lot higher yeah. uh, and, and the ongoing price, you see. So vaping is by far the cheaper choice and that is the one that has had the most support uh, and is supported by the government for the moment. So that is the transition path and that is what they feel they've done. We've given you a path out of smoking and and then, you know, make sure you don't relapse, stay vaping, and, and you know, if you think you're going to relapse, but but work towards giving that up as well. So it is a prohibitionary path um, with a kind of harm reduction cloak on it. Yeah. Well, because I was going to say, then why why is it that you don't find more people subscribing to vaping as an alternative i mean if we're talking about the crime and the black market and people's need to get those cigarettes clearly the message isn't really passing through is it is it because of the lack of ability to message properly about vaping and get the news out to people and say hey there is something you can you have something you can transition to that'll give you a relative experience why is it that people um, knowing that that the cigarettes are on the way out? Um, why more don't are they afraid of vaping? Is that maybe the the negative messaging that's able to pass? Oh no, we've been very um, we've had great success here. Really, the smoking rate has dropped rapidly, and uh, since you know, I mean, basically people were getting access to vaping products around about 2015. It really started to sort of take off. And then once the government passed the vaping regulation and kind of it, that was a stamp of approval for people uh, that they, they felt that, OK, well, if the government supports it, it must be OK. And then we see an even, you know, uh, higher uptake from that point on. Plus, the government ran a campaign, vape to quit campaign on TV, mass media. Yeah. So there has been a lot of messages saying we want you to do this. This is. You, you know, smoking is the worst thing you can do for your health. This is a less harmful alternative. Please do it. You know, Jacinda Ardern, when she was prime minister, got on and said, please do this. And a lot of people have. So it, it is a success here. And it's a good model for other countries to look at, although Australia would never look at us because no. <laughs> we're big rivals, right? You know, like because they're like just the rugby and we win everything. It's sort of thing like that. <laughs> You know, I guess it's like. Yeah, Could you say that again for the people in New South Wales, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, no, no, better not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, so we've been, it's been very successful. Um, and we can show other countries. <laughs> you know, this is what you could achieve with reducing smoking rates, reducing smoking among youth. I mean, that's like in the US, it's nearly over yeah. any very small number. Um, but of course, um, you are right, Tim, what it, there are some barriers, I'll be doing a workshop on this, and asking others to come and brainstorm. So we can look at different countries, but I've looked at the barriers to vaping here, the barriers to switching. Uh, the barriers to quitting and there's lots of reasons that you would know all of them uh, but the misinformation is is probably the most deadly one it, yeah. it's really it really is turning people off even some of our participants in my uh voices of the five percent study 
and you can, you know, please have a look at, at the yeah. case stories I put, put online, Voices of the Five Number Percent Word, uh, dot NZ. And um, we're starting to hear from some of them. You know, they've tried vaping or they were vaping, and they're like, oh, but, if, you know, it's as harmful <laughs> or more harmful. If it's as harmful or more harmful than smoking, I may as well smoke. So we've got people going back yep. to smoking because of the misinformation. When the government starts saying things like uh, like they're doing at the moment, they've just opened a consultation about capping the nicotine, oh. and the, um, nicotine salt in the, yeah, the, anyway, yep. wanting to bring it down from 50 milligrams per mil to 20, is it 28.5? Someone can correct yeah. me, um, around about that amount. They're sending the message. It signals to everybody, oh, nicotine must be dangerous because they've got yeah. to reduce the level. This is the government, you know, the official source saying this, and then all the academics that must be behind that advice, all of the doctors, um, our Ministry of Health is a, is a medically trained doctor, you know, so it sends that message. Mm -hmm. Nicotine is dangerous and there's something bad there. And, you know, it, it's it's killing. It's going to kill people. People are going back to smoking. Yeah, it, it's it's just weird. This is not my question, but it's just weird that you, you have two places with a, with a great model and it's working. You know, New Zealand and New England and England. And it just seems like all that data and all that information that you guys have is is basically useless to everyone. Nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to see it. Nobody wants to talk about it. That you know, you have numbers. You have low. You, you, the smoking rate in your country has dropped like three percent, three point five percent, or something like that, from nine to six or something like that. And it just to me, it just baffles me that it, we have all this data, and now we have we should start st start seeing a difference on the healthcare side. Uh, uh, at some point in time, do you, do you think that's when we'll start seeing other countries take that into consideration? That the model that you guys have in England, with with lower healthcare, people using healthcare a lot less and being more healthier. Well, you know, you would hope so, but the other model you didn't mention is Sweden. Sweden, I'm and, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sweden, there's, you know, at least 30 years where we you can look at the health. What, is, what effect does this have on health yeah. when people stop smoking and move to a, you know, very low-risk uh, alternative, like, for example, Swedish snus, and they have the lowest rates of lung cancer. They have, yeah. you know, their rates of cardiovascular disease are like, you know, massively different for the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. And so we got the data showing the health outcome down the track. Um, it's not going to make any difference to them. It's not about saving lives. It's it's about their what ideology. The, what and, do you think would blow their hair back and get them to notice? I think they care a lot about money. money. Crime, <laughs> and, you would think. You Social would think, justice. You yeah. would think, wouldn't you? Yeah. But, yeah, we just have, it's just through the roof. Yeah. And because, you know, I tried to explain this in my robbery paper, paper about the robberies that were occurring here, that it sets, it kind of sets a norm and it, and it kind of normalizes crime uh, and and then it can spread. So we, we just had a young 12-year-old Filipino girl. Her family have only just moved to New Zealand. And she's at, like, KFC. Or, oh, no, sorry, I think it was McDonald's. And some girls at the next table just beat the shit out of her. Like, blood coming out. 12-year-old, small Filipino girl, new migrant family here. It, it's happening nearly every day, somebody's you know, getting attacked. Um, is it a, a national sort of hate crime? As a Well, we, they won't we say the ethnicity of the attacker um, because the interracial tension has been, yeah. been um, incited to get very bad here um, as a political football, which my 
paper about the robberies talked about political footballs. Vaping has been used as a political football. Mm. Um, you know, it used to be smoking was used as a political football, the robberies of dairies. We've got an election coming up in just four months. So they're using anything they can to try and win points. You know, yep, opposition yep. will be saying the 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 government that's in, look at their failing, look at all these robberies. Everyone is like scared. Their children are being beaten up at school. Um, a five-year-old child at one school was beaten and sodomized by a nine and 10 year old boy in the school bathroom. Mm. This is very recently, it was very traumatic yeah. for him, and, but I can't, I just can't stand yeah. it. And so it's um, really frightening things happening to what we all have experienced growing up here and the changes that are occurring. Um, and the politicians are all gonna use it Yep. And they're using vaping and they're whipping up fear about vaping and they're whipping up parents and teachers to think that this thing is so dangerous. Children are getting addicted. <laughs> oh, my God. So, and as a public health professor, I'm like, what about the sexual abuse? Yeah. That's way more dangerous. What about the yeah. alcohol, mm. the injury and deaths among youth. The ethnocentric alcohol. hate crimes in New Zealand and, and crimes of uh, prejudice toward people who are from other countries or different backgrounds have gotten so bad that they don't speak about those and instead defer to talking about how bad vaping is. Vaping is. Is that a, <laughs> is that a fair categorization? Yeah. Yeah. I think vaping is a distraction. It's yeah. They're definitely whipping up panic around it. Uh, it's partly distraction. It's partly I'm in Alabama and I'm shocked. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's yeah. incredible. All it's right, I have a question bad. for you, and we're gonna switch it up. I like to get a little, little bit to know a little bit about you. But uh, when I was doing some research uh, on you, I noticed that you are a published author of poetry and short stories. Mm -hmm. uh, would you mind sharing one of your poems with us? You got one off the oh. top of your head? Yeah. I uh, know I don't I don't uh, have poems off the top of my head, um, <laughs> and I don't even know that I have any like on my computer in front of me. But I, do have, I do have one about vaping. Yeah, good. Do that one. Yeah. Um, not sure I could find it, but if you keep talking, and I'll see if I can. Oh, you don't because want to do that. That would really fit the motif. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I I haven't got much here. I've got one. Uh -oh. Roses yeah. roses are red, <laughs> vi violets are blue. Vaping is good, so grab your voo poo. <laughs> Go grab your voo poo. You're a poet. You're a poet. Dear I need Lord, to... that's so bad. Okay, <laughs> I have found one actually, and it's Go from ahead. it's from one of our participants. Well, I based it on. I listened to all of the interviews. We we went to we've been interviewing 62 people, very diverse across the country, you know, and different ethnicities. And um, one guy's story just really, you know, really touched me. And I don't get to write poetry very much, but, um, you know, it just... So this is called Out, Road Accident. Sorry, I'm going to start again because yeah. I'm not following my uh, format. Out. Road, accident, head, and life pulled to pieces, patched up, taught to write lists, what you like to watch on TV. Ask if you don't understand. Diary appointments, given coloured pens to code healthcare services, the chemist, marked, eligible for a council flat, like an old fella, put on a supported living weekly payment, Support living, he calls it. But where's the support and where's the living? I get so bloody excited to do things. Went to the beach this morning, got some muscles, biked, just for something to do. Get home and, yeah, there's nothing important to do. I'll take my pills. That puts me out for about two bloody hours. Very nice. Bravo. You hear these people's stories, you yes. know, and you, you, it, that keeps me going. Whenever I'm like, you know, 
being abused or sort of that creepy, creepy, those creepy guys, creepy old white guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yes, they are creepy old white guys. She's, you know, she's right. <laughs> she's right. Objectively yeah, speaking, and they, they just, you know, when they attack me, it just feels slightly different from when yeah. they have a go at you yeah. guys. Yeah. If you know what I mean, Alison, yeah. I don't know if you get any, you know. But, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> They, yeah. it's like they, yeah, I'm not going to say they get off on it. So. <laughs> on, the, on, on, on the sunny side of the spectrum, I've never felt more accomplished than the day that we managed to get your account reinstated on Twitter. It was like an yeah. entire harm reduction community effort because they suspended your account for like no reason, mm -hmm. no nothing. It was just an absurd mistake. For a long time. I was time, so happy. Too. That was a long time that you were like, I was yeah. surprised. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. And yeah. you'd create a lot of lists that I find people on. Uh, yeah. and, if, and anyway, that day that they finally reinstated your account, I, I yeah, set a prayer, lit a, can, that, lit a candle. It was really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was really amazing. Um, the community effort and the work that went involved to find out who to contact at Twitter and contact that woman who was right at the top that was really great but i was i was swept out of 70,000 new zealanders were banned all at the same time all at the same time and yeah and it was something to do with qAnon which i didn't even know what what it meant and um and of course simon chapman was like yeah you know yeah. and he's like using more than it happy to implicate i'm sure some kind of evidence of of my evilness or whatever um but you know that i think the um it was definitely politically organized, um, you know, yeah. with Twitter. And, and some of the Twitter files are showing us that that's happening. I never saw, they didn't put out yet who in New Zealand um, gave them the list. Uh, and I've been on the government's list you mm. know, from way back, um, a few ministers back, ministry ministers of who were in yeah. control of tobacco control. And they just, as soon as they get into office, you're blocked by them. You're blocked. So, yeah, they block you. You know, it's like they don't, she doesn't even know who I am. She doesn't even know who, who I, I am. I just don't like yeah, that from, name. From day to day, yeah, you're, you're a big tobacco on. shill. You're a, a vaping yeah, shill. Whatever. You're a shill. Oh, no, yeah. There's, a, wanna, there's quite a lot of us. In, yeah, in I don't block everybody whose name but, starts but, with M. So you have one of the most <laughs> multifaceted experiences, professional experiences of anyone in the professional arena of tobacco harm reduction. And, you know, bravo for being someone who changed their mind, A, but B, for being able to trace it back to the origins where maybe you weren't uh, uh, so proud of what you were doing and the policies you were implementing and to be able to look back at that and see how, much, how far you've come. The only way we change minds is to ask people who have changed their minds what what changed yours. And yeah. uh, I, thank you. Well, Sweden, uh, I, you know, I mean, the, the Swedish data. If I'm, I think, uh, I mean, another thing is, you know, seeing people in New Zealand get a job uh, in Māori tobacco control, and so. The decade, you know, you've got one decade and the rates are slowly, very slowly, like 0.5 of a percent or one percent dropping in reduction. And and you know, for Māori, let's say. And then this person gets a job and they 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 take the podium, they make themselves the king of tobacco control. Don't <laughs> have like, you know, don't even know if they even had a degree. Um, try and push me out of the picture. And then you see smoking prevalence plateau for a whole decade, nothing, yeah. not as nothing, just complete plateau for a decade until he's gone. And then we start to move again. And so I can see that people, certain people can undermine uh, the reduction in smoking drastically and governments, you know, it can be a single person like Simon Chapman, it can be um, a group of people, and Simon pe Simon does work with a group of them. There's a little cabal that work around the world together. Um, so lost, it's that yeah. as well. It's like I trialed cessation interventions. I did the research. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't work. Yeah. And then you get new people come in.
generation after generation, you know, so it's like third generation now. And um, everybody, their egos, you know, like, oh, I've got an idea. Ah, oh, this will really work. And I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, no, it won't because yeah. behavioral ther the theories, it's not there. We've tried it before. I know it won't work, but they don't care. Yeah. They know better. The number of uh, people. Hold on, Paul. Hold on, Paul. Hold on, Paul. Hold on, Paul. Fill up. That's Philip. Philip. I'm sorry. Paul is not on the show anymore I, right I got, now. I got he to left. Yeah, hold on, Philip. I, I, I kind of want to bring something up that you just said because that's kind of like my next question for you, but you already started talking about it. Uh, I, the first part of this is a joke, so don't you know, anybody that's out there that's an Al Gore fan, don't don't get upset. Uh, with the invention of the Internet by Al Gore, <laughs> again, just a joke, uh, you know, social media and, uh, you know, the induction of social media and everything like that. And everyone's become a doctor and, and you are actually a doctor. So you were just talking about how, you know, the science and everything like that. Uh, when you start seeing tweets from people that are out there with these ideas and, and, and throwing out this, this so-called science and, 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 and meta. Yeah, exactly. Are you in some way, are, are your hands tied in any way or are you able to say, Hey, you are wrong. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's, it's, a, <laughs> you know, there's probably been a few times in my life where I've thought I've made a mistake getting educated and, you know, what what am I going to do to survive, to keep going? You know, do I need a lobotomy or something? Because, um, you know, when you, you know, I mean, I've spent, it was, it was years of education, years, yeah, on yeah. top of a lot of street smarts and, and experience as well. And um, <clears throat> to be so sort of thoroughly educated, uh, and have a holistic view as well. So I have both a Māori, kind of a Māori worldview, and I'm, I've been trained in the Western system. And so more of a systems thinker, and it it can be hard to explain things because it's so, like, complicated or complex right. models. But I, um, yeah, it does my head in. It does my head in. There are people, and... I, I have to stop myself all the time. I try not to say anything. Oh, I bet. Like, <laughs> I because, bet. Yeah, because it, it's so frustrating. I can see the incompetence. It can be taxing. Yeah. It, yes, the incompetence. I mean, there, there, there are certain posts when I see on Twitter and I'll read it and I'm like, I'm not touching this. I, I, I can't, I can't argue with this point. I have no idea what it, what was being discussed, but I can just imagine like you're reading it and you're going, what a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it, I, I always wondered, cause I see it. I see it. Like when I go to my doctor, he does it all the time. He goes, John, if you, if you say web MD just once during this appointment, I swear to God, I'm going to kill you. And, it, and I, it almost feels like, even on Twitter, you see these posts all day and you're saying to yourself, where's the doctor? I don't see doctor. I just see, I won't say any names. <laughs> we all know, uh, you all, yeah, we all know who we're talking about. <laughs> we, all, we all know who we're talking about on Twitter. Yeah, but some of them are doctors. Yeah. Some and, are and doctors. <laughs> some are, that's the worst part yeah, of it. So some are doctors. Happened, yeah, so what's happened Very over bad. three generations, and I've been in universities, and, I, and I've been given courses and told oh we're taking it off those people can you look at this i had to completely write it rewrite it it was propaganda it was yeah. one-sided biased you know ideology yeah. um pushing one particular view i'm like this isn't university academic work you don't do that yeah. you teach people how to think how to think critically you give them both sides yeah. you don't tell them what to think and so I've seen a breakdown in academia and in universities. They got rid of, you know, most universities in Western, in the Western world have gotten rid of what they call the right wing thinkers. They've been completely co-opted, you know, by a particular group of ideologies. And they're not, they're not, they're not universities anymore. They're not what universities are supposed to be. And now we have people coming out with their degree from these universities. 
and they can't rub two brain cells together. Yeah. They've been mentored by people who have only two brain cells to rub together. It's that whole cult sort of mind, you know, control stuff that I experienced when I look back at tobacco control and some of the huge conferences I went to and the, you know, the speaker flashing sort of uh, German World War II Hitler imagery <laughs> while he's talking. And I'm, I'm like looking around and everyone's like nodding, you know, and I'm like, that freaked sheep, me out. Sheep, sheep, yeah. sheep. I would not have been nodding. No. no, it was all I could do was just I just scribbled it down. I just scribbled down everything that was happening. And oh my gosh, now you know the, the images that he was flashing up behind him, a barbed wire fence. Do you, so. do you ever start doodling like infinite rings and like really, really ugly stick figures when you're trying to just block someone's bullshit out? Sorry. Please there's, continue. There's, so we're up against two things basically. Um, incompetence, you know, people who should not have got a degree, they shouldn't have, you know, I mean, it's cornflakes packet. They're, we're giving them away. The university is giving them away. I'll take one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all you have to do now is enroll. I got to tell you, uh, it's not all people said it would no, be. No, I know. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I've marked work that, and it's like, no, you, you can't, fail everybody <laughs> yeah. um and so incompetence and then the other one is just simply uh vicious psychopathic um yeah yeah uh let me yeah, go ahead control. yeah yeah look ahead philip you can yeah you're up because i love it when phil's eyes just get all big <laughs> Me? Me? Did no one in New Zealand uh, stop to think that taking away licenses from uh, vape retailers, making fewer, uh, uh, yeah, uh, giving fewer licenses, therefore making the availability of vaping products more limited, did they not think that that would be a bad thing to do concurrently with reducing the nicotine in cigarettes and increasing the age in which people can buy cigarettes by year over year? Did they not notice that that might have been uh, insult to injury? I'm just dying to know who didn't say something because it would be the perfect time to expand the availability of safer alternatives. For example, in the United States, we have Mr. Brian King, King Brian, who is, the more I think about it, uh, a plant from the CDC. Uh, he's just Oh, yes, God, no. he's, he's got so many different sides of his mouth. I have no idea what the hell's going on or what he's saying. But I do think that, that has to be, there has to be, um, and I'm not saying it's sinister or uh, that there is absolutely no health in that public health policy. Zero. Because if it, I liken it to banning all menthol vapes and then banning all menthol cigarettes, why in God's name would you not concurrently if you had to ban something i'm as far as i'm concerned you ban nothing it's a philosophical human right and we're not going to get into that but if you ban one thing you give them something that is equally satisfying and less harmful that is the public health move to pursue i'm just curious did no one in the new zealand current government uh, have any objection to uh, making vape shops more scarce and less um, prominent. I mean, it's just incredible. And you're right. New Zealand does have the most envious tobacco harm reduction policy, one of them in the world. And I'm just shocked at this. Yeah, it's um, well, you know, when you said, you know, that's ph philosophical, I'm not going to get into this, but actually that's what this is all about. It is. And, and I've my, you know, please have a look at my video that I've, um, for yeah. the panel I'm on at the GFN, and my video is now up, and it is philosophical. I'm like, oh gosh, there I go again. It's going to be how many people actually going to, you know? I, I really enjoyed it. Did you watch it? I did. Oh, so you know, it it is philosophical, but it's because of you know the systems thinking or holistic thinking, uh, the ideologies that are competing in the world are 
underneath this. Power and control of resources, power and control of the money. Who gets the money? Who gets the tax? Who who do we tax? And then who do we give it to? And that's what it's all about. It's, um, you know, vaping is a huge threat to pharmaceutical companies that have spent millions, billions of dollars on on cited on uh, Champix, Cyban, you know, the smoking cessation medications, the nicotine patches, gum, lozenge, microtab, inhaler, you know, many products they've created. Cessation, smoking cessation is a business, an industry. Um, tobacco control is an industry. What what happens if people stop smoking like en masse? What what's what how long before they stop? getting cancer, they stop having heart attacks and stroke and their diabetes isn't as bad and their asthma isn't as bad and, oh, shit, we might not actually need so many nurses. We might not actually need Mm. so many doctors. We might not need all of those, that equipment, those carbon monoxide monitors, those spirometer monitors, those beds, those hospitals. Um. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen to all those people who roll BDs? All those women who have no other source of income mm-hmm. and and they roll BDs all day or those those low income people, no income people who grow tobacco and sell it. Oh my gosh, how many how many doctors, nurses are going to lose their jobs? Public health. Oh my gosh, is public health going to be made redundant? They have to go back to focusing on water quality and germ spreading and food education (laughs) and yeah education things that might actually be worthwhile (laughs) doing son of a basic health um you know this is you know vaping could bring about massive social change and it happened so fast in japan and you know i was lucky to go with a, a delegation and meet with the minister of finance there He is completely aware. He knew. He modeled it all out. He knew what was going to happen if people continued to stop smoking at the rate that they were. I mean, I think it's down 43% from what it was before the introduction of the heat not burn products. Japan Tobacco makes their own. Um, Then Korea jumps and it's like, whoa, we've got to get in on this. So the Korean tobacco company make their own uh, heat not burn product. Their smoking plummeted too fast, so fast, the government had to slow it down. And then they come out with, uh, or, or actually it's not safe, and, and, mm-hmm. and plateau it out. How fast should social change occur? And what are those people who are going to lose their jobs? What are we going to do with them? What, what Australia, you know, what are we? Well, oh my gosh, we've we've lost all this money. We've lost all this money from tax on tobacco. What are we going to do? We can't afford to have that hole. So, a lot of it is politics. A lot of it is about the money, uh, and then a lot of it is about the ideology. Of um, you know, frankly, I found a great paper the other day. It was about um, left wing authoritarianism and some research into that. And they found that some people, you know, they're not left-wing or right-wing, actually. They just like to join protests because they like to bash people up because they're psychopaths. Um, or, they're, or they have, what was the other one, neuro, neuro, neurotic um, antagonism or something. So some people have personality traits to just cause them to be attracted to public health work so they can... You know, be a little Hitler, like the Paul Narcissistic personality disorder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, narcissistic uh, uh, antagonism and stuff. And um, so there's some really interesting research coming out around that, especially because of COVID and lockdowns and a lot of people being like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, what are they doing now? What what, what is happening? And, and you know, I... One of my first areas of uh, interest was uh, domestic violence. My master's research was in that, and the I think it's it was the um, Duluth um, Power and Control Wheel. I still 
I still always remember that Duluth power and control wheel. Um, and you can look at that being used at an individual family level, but mm -hmm. but it's also at a political level and a systems level. Um, governments, politicians, uh, it's all about that tax money and what to do and yep. getting rich. You know, they get personally rich out of a job and yep. and, our, and you know, because we're going into an election and they're like, we want to tax the rich. And meanwhile, they are getting rich. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, thinking, okay. That, hap that happens everywhere. Even yeah, here. It's, Tim, they're so crooked. Yeah, they're so, there's Tim. no integrity, you know. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have Tim's got a question for you. Well, <clears throat> so we were talking a bit about the um, you know, the, the, the panic that government seems to set for themselves around the loss of their cash crop, and that's tobacco in general. Um, but I don't you see the government at all envisioning a future where they could find some other ailment to pursue as opposed to something as less dangerous as some would quantify it as nicotine addiction and stuff like that? Because I, I don't I mean, I've been vaping for what, since? 2011 roughly you know and i've never really ever considered myself sort of at a point where i'm addicted to nicotine in the gen in the in the general sense of terms i mean i guess it's a coping element in my life but i don't you know to me it's not much different or that far off from you know say drinking coffee or you know drinking soda or whatever or tea that has caffeine in it you know I've never felt like that consumption of nicotine has kind of got me to the brink of being on the precipice of, of being that close to being a heroin addict where I need the fix so bad. I can't, I can't seem to find my way out of it, but you would think that government would survey what they're really trying to target, you know, in terms of the, the, the thing that keeps people sick and addicted. Do they, do they, do they, not want to look at other things that the the pharmaceutical companies might want to put their money towards like things like depression, anxiety, like all the other, you know, ADD, all, all those other quote unquote, you know, uh, chemical imbalance issues. I mean, like that's got to make them billions of dollars a year in general. I, I mean, I don't understand why they seem to think that just eradicating vaping slowly over time will somehow allow them to bring that, that one thing, especially in New Zealand, where they're effectively kind of weaning cigarettes away from the, the market, too. So where's the moral panic there? Right. I don't seem to I'm trying to find the the correlation between the two. Well, this is why the, the, where the political football idea is quite useful, because, you know, if they kick this football out of the park, then they they've got to get a new ball and they will. And so there, there's quite a long list um, watching the public health literature. Uh, they're talking about all them all the time, and and there's plenty of clues about what they're going to target next, and it's not really about s stopping a harm or reducing a disease or, you know, it's just they've got to find the next gravy train, um, and and when they're when you're in that echo chamber, you're not thinking that way, you know, like people might say, oh, it's all about money. I'm going, no, it's not. It's about saving lives. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and that is why I got into um, working on this issue because it does kill people yes. and something's got to be done. But, you know, when you sort of, you could do like a systematic review, like obviously Public Health England have done, going, look, this will reduce smoking and this will, therefore, if we get people to stop smoking, it is eventually going to lead to less disease and less premature death. And, and, and as you say, um, people are ignoring it. Um, and so the political football idea is, um, oh, what's coming next? They want to attack sugar to reduce yeah. obesity. <laughs> sugar. <laughs> yeah. Wh which one? Which one of the 200 are you going to? You know, 200 yeah. natural sugars in the you world. Think they have a love, wheel? The, love the new Splenda study, by the way. Do, Good do, stuff. Do you think they have a wheel that they have there in the office with just all these <laughs> things and they just spin it? Yeah. <laughs> I imagine yeah. the worst part of being in public health is if you actually give a shit about public health. Yeah. Yeah. yeah then you are, I, have, I have no... <laughs> 
problem <laughs> believing your earnest interest in helping people and improving public health in general. Yeah. Uh, you are one of a, only a handful of people that I can say that about. So yeah. bravo. The focus needs to be on the disease rates, the incidence of disease mm -hmm. and the death rates, not the moral shit they bring in. Right. You know, we don't have any right to go around and say, um, you know, you, you need to get out and walk or as, as one of our politicians nearly said something else then, uh, said during lockdown, you know, get out and spread your legs. Um, <laughs> 10,000 10, steps. <laughs> Before you, know? you go, you have to tell them the story about the curtain twitchers. It was the first G, uh, GFN uh, talk I ever watched that you gave, and you uh, mentioned curtain twitchers and what those were, and I almost died howling. What, the ones that are looking at the neighbors? To yeah. To the curtains? In. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, well, I mean, the government was saying, you know, well, there was a Dobbin number. And yeah. Australia, did, Australia did this for vaping. They set up a Dobbin number. If you see someone vaping, no, bring this so. number and report them. Yeah, report them. And, yeah, so <laughs> that comes from public health. Yeah. That's, the sec that's what it's become. The sector has become one of the leading sectors in this program of um, social control, social engineering, brainwashing from a very young age. Um, there is some authoritative dystopian, you know. It's, it's completely been co-opted and moved from what public health was. Quality water, food mm -hmm. safety, sanitation, make sure people have somewhere to go to the toilet, please, not yeah. on the beach. Yeah. Um, and you know, malaria and, uh, you know, not spreading bugs and yeah. mosquito nets and, you know, vaccines and <laughs> Food. programs. To make Thank sure you. People Thank are you. Yeah. <laughs> Allie, Allie you. have a question? Allie? So um, I recently went to the ESIG summit and, and there was uh, two presenters from New Zealand, uh, uh, Deborah Arnett and uh, I think uh, Ben. Only Ben. Only yeah, yeah. New you Zealand. You didn't? Um, yes, yes. Um, they were on the panel together, the panel talk, and they were just talking, you know, with the FDA. <laughs> they, they were on the panel with Kathleen Crosby and um, Benjamin uh, um, from the FDA. And, and it's just shocking to me that they can show the success that they've had with this model. They can show the way that they look at nicotine and even the website, you know, that you can go to and, and it, and it, you know, they're not against, com you know, they're not against nicotine, just combustion. And I, and to see that it makes no difference whatsoever to these people is, is just, you know, it's, it's mind blowing to me, you know, and obviously jealous as somebody from the U S who wishes that we could have some kind of, you know, compromise at, at least, um, you know, and it just, you know, it really drives me crazy to see like, the success that you guys are having and that people in, in health, you know, public health here just really don't, they're not phased, you know, they just keep kind of defaulting back to, will Congress put this on us and, you know, we'll change the right, change the way you regulate things because this is working. So the science is there. That entire day was science and, and, and debunking everything that the FDA has done and it made no difference whatsoever and it and you know what kind of you know i don't even know if you can make a suggestion because i think we've tried everything but you know what kind of suggestion can you make to try to you know reason with these people or do you think that it's just kind of a lost cause and that you know the more science that comes out over time that just eventually won't be able to deny you know what you guys are having success with i think uh so my gfn video that i've put out um, and I talk about societies, that what really helped me listening, and, you know, so I've been to a few of the six summits and watched the US one online, if I, you know, you know, for the last three years, I think. And, you know, it was same, same, same. This one was quite different. So I was, I was like, oh, okay, it, this is good. There's some, there's some different thinking going on here now. So I see a shift. I see a shift in them because they're very, they're quite conservative, and uh, that you know, first 
or previous years, there was just some tiptoeing around and they weren't like really willing to, yeah, vaping saves lives, you know. Uh, it was it was a lot more conservative. But now there's a shift and that's good. Now that's also where I've got to hear your uh, FDA guys speaking. Um, this one and the previous one, they both say the same thing year after year. Every time. Every time. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, what thing uh, I heard and, and what's a good thing to remember is that people are in a role. So the society's got all of these structures to control society and um, infrastructure and organisations and hierarchies. And, and the law is one of those. And it was, I think both of them have said it, or at least the previous one said it, or maybe King, you know, Brian has said it as well. And I think they said it quite clearly. It's our job to enforce the law. You need to see them more like that. They're not scientists. They're not, their job is not science. Their job is not research. Their job is not, um, they are government officials. They, their job is to enforce the law. The people that will change the law are consumers, public pressure, and politicians, not government officials. They're robots in the system yeah. and they've got to do their job. It doesn't matter that in front of you, you would hope it would, but it doesn't matter that in front of them, they must have seen all the evidence showing them that they, what they've been given is a shit task. It's wrong. It's going to harm people. But it's not their job to question the government. It's not their job to... They're not in a role where they can do anything else but enforce the law and enforce what, do what they're told by their boss, by yeah. the politicians or whoever they report to or the president or whoever it is or Fauci or whatever. Yeah. They, they are an employee and they're doing their job and they have all these restrictions around how they can act, what they can say, uh, what they can do. And when, I mean, I've been a policy analyst and reporting to the Prime Minister here in New Zealand as part of the organisation I was in. And there are a lot of rules. You know, you're not allowed to create any bad press. You know, if, if, if we something came out and we hadn't briefed her that, that people were going to blow up about some law or, or some dirty water leaked and someone died, if we hadn't briefed her, she would come across the road and blast, you know, our, um, our boss, Not my because boss. because people died, but because of the optics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, optics, exactly. <clears throat> the optics, the votes, the, yeah, it's the optics. And <clears throat> Speaking so, of that, speaking of that, I because I, 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 every, every government system is a little different. So the way we go about fighting vaping is going to be a little bit different than how you go about it. Are you guys close to the pretty much to the last step, or, or is there anything else you guys can do in the court system as a consumer? Uh, I saw the smile, so. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I was going to say, and I say this in my GFN video, you know, that the prohibitionists will never stop because for them, it's it's about enforcing their ideology on everybody, and that everybody should do what they say and think like them and, and live like them and eat what they say you should yeah. eat, etc. So they're all about power and control and not health. Um, what can the consumer do and what can advocates do and what can, you know, we just have to keep standing up for human rights, for personal autonomy, for uh, honesty and and to fight the misinformation, lies, and wholesale um, brainwashing that's going on now across the world. Internet obviously has enabled a lot of that, but it's about, you know, we can also use the internet for good. Yeah. But it's definitely, you, you know, you have massive um, programs going on and, you know, to mislead the public yeah and 
I, I mean, there's no way. I mean, is there a possibility? I, I'm not sure if you have distributors there or the vape shops, but are there ways for them to take it to the courts? Can they file lawsuits? Can they bring this to to a, a judge or, or, and have a, a actually like we are going to about to do eventually here? Uh, hopefully someday it will get to the Supreme Court and they'll make the decision and change everything for us. But is it possible there? I, I, I don't know how your system works. And does the consumer, the owner, the distro manager or distro owner have a voice? It's so expensive that it's really prohibitive. You know, I mean, mm. uh, the vape, you know, many people in the vape industry are not tobacco. It's right. not tobacco industry. Right. They don't have the money that tobacco companies have. And, uh, you know, so even it's it's just so expensive yeah it's, it's just prohibitive um i mean i started legal action uh against the ministry of health for blacklisting me for mm. um miss for reinterpreting the article 5.3 of the framework convention on tobacco control and applying it to me an independent researcher I'm not a tobacco company. I've never worked for a tobacco company right. or any any such. Feel free to producer. say that twice for our viewers, please. For the people. Yeah. Feel, feel free to say that twice for our viewers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, um, and you know, and my my in university, you know, like as an academic, a researcher, you come up with a research idea based on the science or the literature and you put in for funding uh, to various places that have funding for research and that's what I did and I put into the foundation for a smoke-free world. I did all my due diligence. I had a lawyer look at everything and look at their pledge and their constitution and how they were set up and it said um, this, you know, they had a fund and researchers could put in their ideas they don't mm. tell me what to study they don't yeah. they don't yeah, yeah it's perfectly uh, legitimate i i looked into it uh, extensively yeah they don't have any intellectual sway over they don't yeah. you know it's like when i went to all the other funding committees i put my idea and they go oh you will fund that and then you do it and you deliver okay. um so to apply the Article 5.3 to scientists, especially scientists who are independent of the industry. And anyway, five, Article 5.3 is about stopping tobacco companies from influencing public policy, from bribing politicians. From bribing, yeah. <laughs> from bribing politicians, yeah. <laughs> from, from bribing political parties, from bribing ministry officials and policy analysts it's it's not about denying the good old lobbyists analysts, the good old lobbyists <laughs> you know access to read they're all uh, they ain't so good research results published in a peer-reviewed journal yeah. but that's don't, what they do don't they laugh don't laugh here but i'm going to ask you a serious question but don't laugh here does your government or any official that works for the government understand how vaping works if you were to put a device in front of them would they understand how this device works there were some that did there were <laughs> well well i don't know i don't know if he is still there um there were some that did understand uh there wouldn't be very many people who had much experience of smoking or vaping i don't think in the in the health realm yeah. um but we've you know the current government has um it has been running a rapid uh restructure uh, renaming re everything of the country <laughs> um so everything is changing rapidly um our institutions don't even have name that we, you know you don't need, they changed the name of everything uh yeah. the and the workforce has turned over a lot and um so i'm not actually sure who's there anymore i don't know if anybody there 
I, I think saving one lives is. one confederate statue at a time yeah for sure okay. and i'm all about you know doing the right thing when it's uh, appropriate but it can tend to get out of hand anyway please continue no that's, that's i mean um, so we've actually made our mistakes they have circled the globe and they are now in full swing in new zealand and on behalf of the United States, I would like to apologize. That's oh, that's a, nice. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's just horrifying. Yeah, really. We, you know, I really think that the DNIC, um, mandatory DNIC, you know, mandatory remove. I mean, exactly. <laughs> Imagine doing that to alcohol. Better. Right? The only uh, reason they don't do it to alcohol is because so many. It's people socially enjoy. acceptable. Alcohol is socially acceptable all over the world. It's all based on the prevalence. If they can bring that prevalence. Yeah. Well, down, the, gar the okay. Guardian uh, can go after pretty much anything on any given day. Today it was like somebody's 15 year old daughter talking about how 90% of their grade, they're vaping. Well, we should ban that. Yeah, I'm post you, It's yeah, you. important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I told my dad I smoked cigarettes. He kicked my ass and grounded me for two months. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. One of these senators is going to wake up one day and look at his daughter or his son's ATM bill and say, "Why are you spending eight hundred dollars a week at Starbucks?" And you're going to see a push to block Starbucks and close them down, and caffeine will be next. Caffeine oh, is oh, next. Oh, I, I agree. But here's yeah. the cool thing. Number one, I still adhere to the, the policy of never uh, infer malice where uh, someone's actions can be explained by incompetence. I still adhere to that whenever possible. The other thing I believe in is term limits. Yep. And if you're going to insist on doing 90% of what a country needs, but 10% of what's going to negate that 90% that you've got right, well, you're not going to keep winning. We would hope that, yeah. you know, <laughs> the, the brainwashing, I mean, because I trained as a psychologist, and not that they taught us about brainwashing, but we did do a little bit on it. And then, you know, you learn about the, like, Stockholm Syndrome and, and, and you know, what... Uh, Follow the watch. Hitler Germany were doing exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we in my undergraduate year, we 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 were taught how to um, yeah. how to do hypnotism, and so yeah, there's just yeah, especially during lockdown and yeah. um, the brainwashing techniques that were being used were astounding to me. I could not, yeah. I couldn't understand why no psychologist was saying. Uh, excuse me, guys. This is straight out of you know, nineteen eighties. Um, play the record backwards and listen to the, the words. <laughs> oh no, way! No, I mean, this goes way back to nineteen thirty five, nineteen forty. Some messages oh, yeah. just being thrown at you. <laughs> How about yeah, I mean, one question for you? Here you go. What was your first car? Not the car. Your first car. A Ford Laser hatchback. Ooh. So I that's probably no the what that is, which is probably the escort cool. to us. Yeah. I think it was in Australia. Escort. I was in yeah. Sydney. Yeah. Mm. So we needed Paul right now. We needed that Aussie <laughs> to tell, <laughs> tell us what that car was. Paul would know that one. Yeah. I'm sure it was probably the Ford Escort, a little hatchback, two door hatchback. Yeah. yeah that's probably um, it. Three, I, I don't remember how many, but it definitely had a hatchback. I kind of had this idea about getting a dog and camping, and you can just sort of open the back up, yeah, hang the tent off the back, and yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> if you were arrested with no explanation, what would your family and friends assume you did? <laughs> uh, Beat up it's, Simon Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gosh. Carl Phillips gets first dibs on that one. <laughs> uh, you know, like, I guess if Steve and Tito Howard, probably my daughter, they would probably think I'd crash the car. <laughs> into what? A government well, building? Anything, you know, like, I think. <laughs> into a statesman? Yeah, my daughter particularly has a very low opinion of my driving. Uh. Um, and... Uh, and I, when I was like, we we're giving her lessons, and I gave her a, a wrong steer <laughs> on a roundabout, and we were yelling from the back seat. Doesn't I'm help. I'm sorry, you know? <laughs> they have those there too. Those need to be eliminated. I'm sorry. What? Roundabouts need to go away. All roundabouts need to go away. 
if anyone would be have been arrested in New Zealand for crashing the car, it would have been me because that was my first experience ever driving a car on on what Dr. Glover would say is the right side of the road, mm. but what I would say is the wrong side of the road, and that was it That's was like weird. flying a plane for the first time. If you've ever done that, yeah. driving in New Zealand and you're used to the way that you normally drive, I can tell you that you're like. You're wide eyed and you know, you, you're you, the, the most alert you've ever been in a vehicle in your entire life. When you yeah. did I, I did it for one day in Rome and I brought the car back. I said, I can't do this. You I drove it. in Rome? <laughs> yeah, it's also terrifying yeah. to drive in Rome. Like, I, ha- I, I, well, I mean, everyone... you're a hero, but God, you're an <laughs> idiot. What's one day, you? that's it. I was like, I'm done. I said, I'm this so is ridiculous. I'm so happy that you're okay. <laughs> yeah. I was so stressed out because Tim's right. You're just, you are you want to go back over to the other side so bad. Yeah, it just, no. I mean, I drove in Paris, but that's like, you know, Little League compared to Yeah, now Rome was insane. Yeah, uh, let's see here. Hold on here. We got one more before. Actually, you don't. What, what would you consider being? Uh, what would be the White House there in New Zealand? What would be considered the White House? The Beehive. Okay, the Beehive. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you if you got an hour Fitting. alone in the Beehive, what would you do? All by I... yourself. Oh, so I can't go lobby someone? <laughs> no, no, no. All by yourself. <laughs> It's a pretty boring place. It's it's well, so is the White House. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the Beehive has a certain <laughs> yeah, it's telling, I think. We've had some very interesting responses to this question. It's from stealing all the batteries from the remote controls, uh, <laughs> running through the White House completely naked. Uh, what, else, what else have we had? We had a bunch of them. We had a bunch oh, of them. Oh, I see. It's like, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I probably would try to find the library <laughs> <laughs> and confirm and then, its existence. And look and see if they've got any of my work in there. Oh, yeah. No, that's not bad. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, plant, plant some of my work in there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then take that book and put it on the, the, mo- the person with the most highest power and set it on his desk. Yeah. <laughs> the, person, the person most likely to take notice, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, good answer. It, it, it's good answer. It, 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 like I said, that question gets it's it's had some some pretty funny responses to it. I mean, stealing the uh, very valuable like million dollar spittoons is a good idea, but I like yours better. Yeah, <laughs> so we've had we've had you know, uh, find Lincoln's bed and sleep in Lincoln's bed, I think, and a couple other ones. I would do that. That would be kind of kind of cool. Go in Lincoln's room and. Sleep on the bed for about an hour. <laughs> I've actually I, I got to answer Matt. this question. Yeah, I'm not going to today. Continue. <laughs> Go ahead, Timmy. What was no, that? I was going to say, I imagine they probably keep everything in like impeccable um, placement. So I would just like lightly shift everything like four <laughs> inches you know and ocd everybody go, go, go down hide the remote go, go down the hallway and like take all the the pictures and just tilt them slightly you know what i mean just like like ruin anybody who has ocd in that building just completely drive them nuts for an entire I'm, I'm gonna pass out here replace clinton with like truman and everybody's like what the f- so I have a question for Dr. Glover. Yeah, for Timmy. So Dr. Glover, obviously, you you not only advocate within the within New, New Zealand, but you take part in these global conversations to try to push the message out. Obviously, your model uh, in New Zealand is 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 far more attractive than to say some other places. I I mean, as it plays to favor to the people who want to vape, right? And now all of a sudden, don't even have that access to it anymore because it's been stripped away from you know based on false uh premise but uh, do you see i mean taking part in some of the global conversations and and those particular forums do you find that the persistence in those conferences um has shed a light or at least offered some light at the end of the tunnel for other governments to potentially maybe switch their thinking about vaping potentially maybe re assess nicotine in general as uh, as as a you know a, a something that exists in our sphere i mean nicotine has been around for eons you know uh, not in, not to include the nightshade plants and all the other things that we like to kind of kind of 
affectionately use is like, well, you know, you know, you, we just, you know, take a bunch of eggplant and then we'll make our vapes out of that or something like that. I mean, it's probably highly unrealistic. But my point, I guess what I'm saying is, is that advocacy is persistence, right? It's not about bullying necessary, but it's about changing minds and changing perspectives. Do you see that those global conferences uh, offer some of the opposition some insight or to maybe rethink that? And do you think that a younger generation coming in behind that sort of creepy old white guy kind of thing that we have to deal with today um, – the younger generation coming in views the world differently or sees the, these, these elements differently, or do you think they're just equally as brainwashed as the creepy old white guys? I, I have a lot of hope for the younger generation, but it's, uh, you know, there are all, there's always going to be different camps. There's always going to be people who, you know, have a certain trait that lends them to, power and control and, they, you know, they get attracted to jobs where they can lord it over uh, others and tell them how to live and how to do every minute thing. Um, the But young people need access to honest, uh, robust, like scientifically based, but, but basically honest information or the best honest information we can have at any point in time and they know they're being lied to a lot and uh, so there's i think a huge distrust among a lot of youth about what's being pushed across the internet um i don't think tv is a really big thing for them anymore uh some of them maybe that's all they have a uh, radio is another uh vehicle that's being used uh so the young people I think they would like to know who to trust, but they just know don't trust anybody, a lot of them. And uh, some are like want to know themselves, so they're driven to find out. The international conferences, so I've just um, been very lucky to go to Sao Paulo and Brazil for a THR summit. And then uh, we repeated that in Bangladesh, in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, and... You know, we, we do some research. Um, we've done some research in Fiji uh, with the um, Fijian people uh, there. And, and, you know, so I have been able to get around. One of the things that I'm really starting to get uh, maybe a little bit of suspicion about is the World Health Organization uh, smoking prevalence statistics. And even some of the scientific papers um, that estimate how many people are dying per year from smoking-related uh, and tobacco, other tobacco product-related diseases. And if you read the methodology, and of course, you know, there's a certain level it's just not accessible to some people. But for, let me just take New Zealand as a simple example. It's been now, when I started... Uh, the line was 4,500 people die every year from smoking. And then at some point it got re recalculated. <laughs> and then from that point onwards, we were saying um, f about 5,000 people a year die from smoking. Well, we've been saying 5,000 people for, well, it must be at least 20 years. Yeah. Has nothing changed? Yeah. Smoking prevalence has gone down. Surely, yeah. you know, has nothing changed? They just never recalculate the number in a robust way. Did they, they change the methodology significantly? They just they just don't do it. Oh, they so they, keep, okay, understand. Yeah, they, they just don't do it. They just keep putting out the same they just number copy from the prior I, year. I, <laughs> I still tend to attribute the high numbers to those who um, either um, found vaping too late or continued smoking. It's it's simply an older generation that is, is still smoking and, and that's fewer people smoking, especially young people, which is great. But unfortunately, those people most affected by uh, just blatant disinformation are not the teenagers. They're the teenagers, boomer parents who are like, oh, yes, this is worse than cigarettes, which is heart wrenching. But. Um, I, 
I wouldn't doubt that there's a certain amount of lackadaisical, uh, you know, data being reported by the World Health Organization. Seeing well, how do they get it? So, for example, everyone's all the countries signed up. So let's take Fiji. Uh, any any country, they have to put in an annual report, and these are online. You can you can have a look at each country's report, and they put how many people smoke and how many this and how many that. So they fill in the form and they submit it. And then that's used by the World Health Organization and others to build their figures about how many people are dying. Yep. Uh, well, not the scientists, leave them out, but other like um, anti-tobacco groups use the World Health Organization figures. How many people are smoking in the world and how many people are dying? Now, how many people are dying is an estimate. It's estimated by it's a formula it's not the actual number yeah. the actual number would be based on let's get the how many people in new zealand died in the last year and what did they die of well researchers in new zealand are not doing that every year they don't do that research it's you're relying on a researcher to go oh i might update the you know how many deaths and what did they die of and I'm going to put in for funding. Well, they've got lots of other more sexy things they want to research, not That's that. Right. Oh, and yeah. the government isn't paying to have that work done. Um, they're off doing more sexy sort of um, woke and... Sexy, you mean well-funded, uh, you know, not to do with uh, lower middle income yeah. people? Who popular, are... popular, you know, the popular narrative of the time. Right. Yeah. The wrong the kind of people. The, ones who it, don't, it's don't, just, donate yeah. to your campaign. It, it's just like the guy that died on the motorcycle, <laughs> had the motorcycle accident, and uh, of course he died from COVID because he, you know that's that was what was funding. So he, you know, he died in the motorcycle crash, but in his death certificate says he died from COVID. So okay, I think I, had a, I thought he got a cut on a coke can, and that's <laughs> what the COVID got into after the motorcycle. Anyway, yeah. so it's all very it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. So and and even in our sector, even in um, the tobacco harm reduction sector, a lot of people use that. Um, 8 million people a year are dying from smoking, even the advocates. And that isn't actually correct. Yeah. It's something like 6.4 million based on, I carry the paper around, the Global Burden of Disease paper, and they did how many people smoke across all countries, and then they estimate the death rates. And But it's an estimate. Yeah. It's an estimate. Is 6.4 so, the low or the high range of the estimate? 6.4 million is how many people die from directly who smoke, no. die from smoking related diseases. That excludes people who die from passive smoking. Um, and then you have a number of people, um, another however many hundreds of thousands die from the oral cancers and, mm -hmm. you know, from chewing tobacco. Yep. But the 8 million is all of it lumped in together. So it's, you know, vaping, well, vaping can help, could potentially be an alternative to chewing tobacco as well. Although I tend to think the oral nicotine pouches are probably more a behavioral um, yeah, you know, you're right. I've been trying. I've been trying for three years. I've been trying buddy. to figure out. Actually, I think those were banned in New Zealand. Didn't yeah. they ban those? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying for three years, and he is the only Never one that moment. I haven't got to quit smoking or quit chewing. It's just, it just, it's just. I don't know what to do. I've I've gotten him up higher nicotine levels and mouth to lung, and, but you know, you you take into play that they put that dip in their mouth. It's in there for 30, 40 minutes before they get rid of it. So they're constantly getting that nicotine. So for him to quit, he's the only one. I've gotten every other smoker to quit. But he is the one chewer that I cannot do it with vaping. And I four have, words: wintergreen flavored Swedish uh, nuts. Yeah, the, the pouches work. True. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, even a nicotine gum could yeah. work for a, someone who chews, but yeah. they they put so little nicotine in them they're ineffective. Oh, you just so all the nicotine replacement products. The nicotine level is too low for them to be effective. At really, you know, to be properly effective. 
yeah. um, as is a smoking it, cessation device. It's um, and and the same with and the, and the ritual is completely off. I think that's a yeah, big yeah. Point. Well, but I mean, it, it is easier if there's some similarities. Like there's a lot of hand to mouth and behavioural yeah. similarities with vaping. And as one of our uh, participants said, you know they they used to sit at the end of the day and have you know outside watch the sunset have a smoke and a beer yep. well they don't have to give up that that enjoyment and they can still sit outside and and but now they vape and have a beer you know you can't have a gum and a beer or oral nicotine and a beer right yeah so, yeah they don't work together <laughs> no, well i mean so, you swallow that sucker and it, it, it can <laughs> that can end badly yeah I mean, I, Public health fails a lot because it goes in and it wants people to be something else. Yeah, it I believe what to be a different culture, uh, hold, hold different on. food, be uh, are, be different everything. Yeah. Are you ready for some fun? Yes. Yes, okay. please. Okay. The first song you remember learning all the words to, and could you sing a few bars? <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, the first song, that would probably be something like in Sunday school or something. There you go. Yeah, I can't just... remember them. I can't I remember, can't remember them. All the, yeah, yeah. It's got to be a you song know. you remember all the words. It just to. That's, that's Benny, B -b -b Benny and the Jets. There you go, a little Elton. Yeah, that's probably, I really still love that song, and I learned all that's the words. A tough one. All right, we can do it. it. We're equal to the task. <laughs> she sang happy. it already. She sang it already. That's all you're getting. <laughs> you have it. Marla, there is absolutely nothing you can't do. You've got this. Come on. It's just Elton John. He has nothing on you. Please. <laughs> all I think I remember is that bit. Is that bird? Tim could probably sing the rest of it. Well, we we have a, we have an Elton John tribute band in town, and the guy looks and sounds just like Elton oh, John. Wow. And that, yeah, and that's one of the. Of course, he does that song. I don't think he could ever get walk off stage without ever doing that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go see. Oh, and one for one for you, Ellie. Um, I think I also really, really loved. Um, these boots are made for walking. <laughs> that's, that's just what they'll, they'll do. do. And one, one of these days, these boots are gonna walk on all the way. You better do, better do, better do, better do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Are there yeah. any more words to that one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's all the words we need to remember. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's all we need to do. Uh, what was your for, favorite? That's one, especially for our woman advocates mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. And, um, you know, I play it in my head and I'm like, yeah. You know, stay strong. That song yeah. is actually would work for advocacy for for us. It would be one of those songs that would work for us. Uh, your favorite toy growing up? Hmm. Toy. She's all I'm toys. <laughs> John, you know how old I am. <laughs> no, I'm. I made a go kart. I was just talking about this the other yeah. night. Um, she invented the the electric motor. <laughs> okay, okay. <I> mean, <laughs> made a go kart, and um, that's what we used to do. I guess we nice. You know, you, you made your own go kart and tree tree houses and things tree like that. Tree houses, yeah. legends. I don't and, remember. Um, and you were this. You were as a child in Australia or New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. In, New Zealand. in Auckland. Yeah. 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 Um, nice. Went to Australia. Uh, later just to on, see the I, football. I finished my schooling over there. <laughs> just to see the football, so you can rub it in on Paul. <laughs> I get so confused about when it, the football is actually a soccer ball, when the football is a rugby ball, and the Australian <laughs> rules football. I don't know what the goddamn difference oh. is on that one, but people who play rugby if you were to uh, say anything about Australian rules and vice versa, you get beaten up. All blacks. Decide, decide all blacks. <laughs> I, I say that. That's the name of the team. Yeah. The all blacks. I saw the movie. Yeah, it was okay. Uh, well, I, I just, I've just made a new gift to take to GFN, but it'd be great to sort of somehow get one to you guys. Um, and I haven't got it right in front of me. I don't know why. That's a shame. Um, I'll try and get someone to throw one in here. Yeah, but, no problem. Yeah. 
No problem. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. It was great to get to know you and, 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 uh, just, you know, it's fun. I like to make it a little bit fun adding these questions and loosen you up a little bit and, and, and get to know you, you know, the personal side of you. So I'm glad you sung the song and you sang two songs for us. So <laughs> yay. And, and and you will see that on Twitter later today. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I, I just it's just been thrown in for me, and this is um, uh, going to we'll be giving one to everyone who comes to our workshop at GFN, and it's something just to keep you going because it's very stressful fighting for your lives and the lives of many other people out there who are being harmed by smoking and harmed by public health who don't want them to stop smoking and are preventing them from using effective methods, fastest, most effective method to quit. So just for you, Philip, because especially because for you, because you don't know the difference between a soccer ball and a rugby. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to Alabama from Hamilton, Ontario. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is what a rugby ball looks like. Yeah, yeah. And it says yeah. team tobacco harm reduction. Oh, nice. Awesome. Right? This is what every ball should look like. And it's a stress it's ball. It's a stress ball, baby. Yeah, yeah. and you can check <laughs> it. I will pay shipping for 12 every month, please. <laughs> I will need replacements. Oh, yeah. I will destroy uh, them daily. Please. Oh, Nick Orlando. We'll put them on, if, we'll put them on can, eBay. Yeah. Mara, would yeah, you would you mind if I read the quote? I'll be very quick. This is the quote. Uh, this yeah. is how I came to know who you are. And this is many years ago. And I was not um, advocating publicly on Facebook. I still don't because I think Facebook is it's just different. Anyhow, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Marwa Glover's quote. The vaping revolution is not just helping people stop smoking. It's part of a long overdue critique of public health ethics parentheses, or lack thereof, parentheses, close. It's shining a light on the flaws in the scientific publication review process. It's revealing that some researchers and doctors are not honest, that academic freedom is an illusion, suppression of science is real, and that many so-called leaders in society are as gullible to disinformation as, quote, the little guy. Marwa Glover. Yep, that's still that, true. That's still true. I give you, I, where is it? Oh. I read that and I thought this is someone that I need to pay attention to. And thank you thank for you. everything that you've done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Timmy, you want to say goodbyes, buddy? Yeah, no, I, I really want to say I think yeah, everyone no. here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just want to say I think everyone here on the panel absolutely admires the work that you do. Um, and we're really proud to have you in our corner. The majority of this panel, I'm, me specifically, I mean, I'm more of a consumer advocate than I am really sort of in the vaping sphere. Uh, I'm in great company, uh, people who touch the vape space. And we get to talk to some wonderful influences. And, and uh, it's, it's very uh, a wonderful experience to get to know you and have you on the show, communicate your message, and then you know, and be on the same team as us, so to speak. So thank you very much for taking the time to spend with us tonight. Yeah. Thank you, here, Tim. Here. Thank you, everybody else who's been online. I've, I couldn't figure out how to comment over there, but I'm watching. Uh, <laughs> Allie. I, I've never been able to figure it out. I'm just... Thank you so much. Obviously, you know, you're an inspiration to all of us. Um, you know, I've followed you for a long time and I'm really glad that you came on the show. I hope that you'll come back and you know if you ever need anybody to go to Fiji with you next time. I'm go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I like that. Women in THR rock. Well, funny story right? really fast. I actually had to land in Fiji on my way to New Zealand when I first <laughs> came over there. They had to land us on that little pinhead and, and and it was the coolest experience ever. I never actually got to see Fiji. I just saw the airport uh, yeah. transition building. And then real quickly, like U.S. dollars turned into French marks. And I'm like, what the heck am I going to do? Because I don't even have the currency of where I'm going. But when you walk into the reception uh, terminal for, at the Fiji airport, it's like like Brady Bunch off a of TV. There's like... <laughs> Like oh, two it's like guys. luau. Shit. Yeah, there's like two guys with, <laughs> with like you know with ukuleles and like and the and the hula girl and, and everything, and they're the singing pipe. songs as you're entering. It's kind of cool. you're like, nope, nope, just here to make a quick call, and I'm <laughs> off. <laughs> I'll take that free drink with the umbrella in it, though. <laughs> Go ahead, Philip. I'm just so glad that you agreed to come on the show and you made the time, and uh, it's uh, absolutely true that uh, you were the first. Um, 
uh, public health official uh, from outside of the United States that I took notice of. And I, I've been vaping and quietly doing, uh, looking for voices of reason for 13 years. I am not affiliated with the industry. I do as much as I can out of my own pocket. And I just want to say pretty much everything you've ever done gives me hope uh, for uh, people, uh, other people in your line of work and that minds can be changed. So that's please, awesome. uh, my gratitude over and over again. Thank and, you. Yeah, and if you don't, we'd love to hear what you got coming on, what's going on in, in the future for you. Uh, I know you, you're, you're headed somewhere, so uh, let everybody. Is there any way we can fo- watch or see your speech? And How let can us we know. help? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the the GFN. Uh, GFN. Yeah, you know, they. Yep, the Global Forum on Nicotine, and they. People can register and watch most of the sessions online. I. I I think it might even be free for consumers at least. And um, the workshop I'll be running there, obviously that's a bit harder to do with people online, so that one won't be online. But I will be producing a summary of what comes out of it. We'll be looking. I just really wanted to see what what the barriers and facilitators to switching or quitting we, we've been researching here in New Zealand, and is it different for people in other areas? Well, of course it will be because context is different, regulation is different, many things are different. So I wanted to involve, it's going to be very interactive and, and uh, you know, break out groups by, say, low income or for women or whatever. And then I'm on a panel. We're talking about uh, science, regulation and morality, and that's um, my pre-panel presentation is up online along with the other panelists uh, so that's already available to look at is the and replay on vimeo or or on the global forum on nicotine is, website is that on you- has yeah, I, the just program. Didn't that. yeah. I didn't know if it, the the replay was online yet usually there's a lag but the, i saw it. it's yeah the program i think uh if you go to the program and then they have the speakers and then it has, there's already a video there that you can watch. Um, so we present our little talk online and that gives us more time at the actual conference just to get into discussion. So people who are supposed to watch the presentations before the panel. And then the other thing that the Global Forum on Nicotine have is this section called GFN Fivers. They are five minute. Uh, videos and I've got one in but there are three that are relevant to my workshop or barriers and facilitators research Uh, one in 2021 one in 2022 and I've just put another one because we're following this group I told you about we're following them through and we're up to two years I'm presenting two years um, barriers and facilitators this one's got a lot more about the facilitators such as that the more modern, you know, the pod systems, um, someone said they're finding they're more efficient uh, and effective for them than uh, the earlier generation models that used. So uh, I will be, so Global Forum on Nicotine in Warsaw, um, leaving this Saturday for there. Uh, I will also be speaking at the Global Tobacco Nicotine Forum, which is going to be uh, on later in September. And I have a few other invites uh, to, I can ho- hopefully I can get to those conferences or at least zoom in. It is difficult being way down uh, at the bottom of the ocean world. <laughs> yeah. You must um, wear some comfortable shoes. Very, very Remember, you're safe, time. though. You're safe. Nobody's going to bother you over there. Exactly, <laughs> right, yeah. It's, it's all the threats from inside the country. Uh, um, yeah, so have you been long. doxxed by Chapman and everything else? Is uh, yeah. Has this done. has this guy made a visit? Has he made a visit to New Zealand in in in, in the future? Uh, you seem to think people <laughs> care about him. They don't. 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 Let's I move know. on. I, I I don't watch a lot of mainstream media. Yeah. Um. You know, I think they lost a lot of people during yeah, lockdown they, here. I mean. Yeah. You know, the prime minister was zooming into the lounge room of every person in the country every day to, you know, 
uh, and it was just over the top um, yeah. inappropriate for me as well as being on Facebook. So many, many people here don't watch him, yeah, the mainstream yeah. media. Plus they just... Yeah. It's, it's a very really important reminder that you need to be brutally honest with the public as you would be with a colleague. It's, it's really yeah. important. And I think advocates for vaping need to be able to uh, disseminate not so great research results along with, you know, really positive research results. So I'm going to shut up. Officially. Yeah. Everybody, I uh, put the uh, link. It's in the uh, chat there for the uh, GFN. Uh, there's, uh, You can register there. It looks like they have a little register button, too. Uh, they have a media. If you're in the media, you can uh, register as a media person. And uh, if you want to go in person, which would be awesome, uh, I guess you can set that up there as well. So check that out. Again, thank you again, Dr. Glover, for joining us. Uh, it's been awesome having you on the show. And you are welcome back anytime you want to discuss anything. Give us a holler. Uh, uh, we're, I think we're all following you. So you can you DM or email me and uh, let, let us know if you wanted to come back on the show and talk about anything. And again, thank you for singing. Thank you for singing two songs for us. Thank you for, for, was, thank yeah. you for sharing. Yeah, thank, you thank you for being who you yeah. are. Yeah. Thank Mazel you so time. much for having me on your yeah. show. Thank yeah. you. And thank right. you to everyone that's watching. Yes. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, you, the the consumers, you guys, um, this is just so amazing for public health, old public health person here, for public health to have consumers doing what you're doing, doing so much work and, uh, you know, really standing up for people, real people, consumers who are being harmed. And so thank you guys. And I draw my strength both from our participants we listen to and and everything you do and all your support to me on uh, Twitter and by having me come and meet you, it's fantastic. And yeah. uh, I am I will see some of you, maybe I'll see you, Alison, um, later this year, probably, hopefully. She's hopefully. popular. She's everywhere. She's everywhere. Very <laughs> much reciprocated. <laughs> She's the uh, the amazing and wonderful Alison. <laughs> yeah, good on you. Good work. Uh, well, we'll see everybody uh, next Wednesday at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, thank you, everybody in the chat. And uh, thank you, Tim, Allison, and Philip, and Paul. Paul had to run. So we'll see everybody next week. Peace. Thank you for Ow. watching, everyone. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>